all for more means more for all. If it can be made, it can be used. And if it can be used, it can be made. History is bunk. Half the time equals double the yield. War is bad for business. As select alphas, conditioned to believe without knowing and to know without believing, you have been chosen to view the surrogate revelations and synthetic mysteries upon which all perfect and placebic belief is founded. Here before you are sacred teletime plex relics of the sanctified life, thought, and holy works of our Ford, from whose divine inspiration came the ultimate perfection of the endless assembly line, which has given us the ultimate endless, perfect happiness of more things, for more wants in perfect balance, with more wants for more things. And it is from our inspired creator of the Model T that we derive our blessed sign of the T. For we be brave. Let us now repeat the catechism. Community. Community. Identity. Identity. Stability. Stability. Ford bless you. I am Musta Fomond, assistant controller to her Ford chip, Nixona Bic, Western World controller and I have been assigned to show you certain selected histobunk highlights from the past. But everything is perfect now, and everything will always be perfect. So what does it matter what things were like when it wasn't perfect? Excellent point, but quite misguided. Exposing future stability monitors, such as yourself, to the imperfection of the past is of course part of the perfection of the present. A centuries ago, in primitive times, before the dawn of civilization, there were things that would be inconceivable to us today. Such things as poverty. Although there was actually land and food in abundance, some starved, because unlike our perfect society, they were unable or unwilling to balance population to consumption. Sometimes too much of one, or too little of the other. The result? Disease. And rather than eradicate the sources of disease, as we have done, the superstitious primitives continue to rely upon a quite useless class of technicians called doctors. Violence, which the ancients actually appear to have enjoyed and reveled in. While we have been perfectly conditioned to want only what we have, and to have only what we want, and are therefore always happy, the uncivilized ancients were prey to destructive emotions, such as ambition, hate, and love, which of course always led to violence, which in turn naturally led only to more violence, and senility, while we remain at the prime metabolic age of 35 to ensure a maximum level of useful consumption until painless death from chemo stimulation between the ages of 80 and 90, the people of the past lacked the knowledge of how to stay young, even though they apparently valued youth so highly that they actually indulged in superstitious self-mutilation. As seminarians who will one day take your places in Syntho-Culture Stability Centers, you must face these histobunk facts, unpleasant and even revolting as they sometimes are, eating the actual flesh of animals and even filthy things from the ground, and sometimes refusing to engage with more than one individual of the opposite sex, and even collecting into groups called families, a pervasively immoral concept of pre-civilized times. Yes, thoroughly disgusting examples of complete sexual perversion, as you can see. Did the primitive females actually... Yes. Primitive females gave viviparous birth to young. Oh. Like animals? Yes, physiologically, exactly like animals. I understand your reactions. Perhaps we should take a brief soma break. Naturally, none of what you have seen would be shown to betas or gammas, much less 
to deltas like these. But each of you is an alpha. You weren't mass-produced in computer-cloned Bakunovsky batches. And you are all supremely happy, supremely content. But then, that is truly the perfection of our civilization. Everyone is adjusted. Everyone has been conditioned to want to do the work he has to do. And thus, everyone is perfectly happy, perfectly content. Alphas like you, betas, gammas, deltas like these, or even epsilons. Are you happy? Happiness for all is happiness for each. Are you glad to be deltas? Deltas all have lots of fun. Deltas get to play and run. Very good. But do you wish you had been incubated as alphas? No, no. Excellent. That's all. You are viewing Helmholtz Watson's film, Planned Perfection. Each newly produced infant is given six full years of nightly, hypnopedic sleep-teach lectures to reinforce class acceptance conditioning. Later, in central conditioning centers like this, each child receives daily happiness reinforcement drills, as well as prescribed courses in erotic play, death acceptance training, full consumption practice, and nature nausea games. Then, upon reaching computer lessons after six more years in a final conditioning school, each happy, healthy individual will go forth to take up his or her predestined place in the greater society, dedicated to ensuring the continuing perfection of community, identity, stability. Excellent and very nicely packaged. You liked the whole film, I mean. Oh, immensely. You caught the whole spirit of unchanging perfection and with admirable simplicity. I'm glad I had a chance to see it before it's computer erased and electro shredded. Computer erased? Electro shredded? Unfortunately, it does contain some dangerously heretical ideas. I made every effort to keep ideas out of it. Take the scene on anti-nature conditioning. Charming scene of little children revolted by fresh flowers. The implication is that nature nausea conditioning is necessary to keep people from enjoying the countryside and thus under-consuming. But that's true. <laughs> Quite beside the point. I just wanted to show why nature nausea training is one of our most recent improvements in... You see? Recent implies past. Improvement implies progress. And if the present is perfect, then there can't be any progress, of course. And even the word why, why, that's the most dangerous of all. It raises the whole question of purpose. No, I'm afraid it would never do to let an ordinary audience watch anything quite as dangerous as your docu-short. But the test audience watched it. They all liked it. You can see right there. Quite meaningless, since they've been conditioned to like anything that's shown them. But... All my work. Exactly the point. Thousands and thousands of feet of film consumed. Hours and hours of work expended by technicians. And once it's been erased and shredded, it can be done all over again. Remember your sleep talk. Don't delay. Consume today. Use it up and throw it away. I'll make a special effort to keep ideas out the next time. Commendable. You know, I'm reaching the age of 50 now, but I still remember my own youth. And I'm sure I had just as many deviant ideas as you do. I even composed a scandalous readout myself once. I think it was something about the possible benefits of allowing mutational differentiation in randomly selected embryos. An interesting idea, but <laughs> dangerous in the wrong hands, of course. How old are you exactly, Helmholtz? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Just think, by the time you reach my age, you'll have been able to have accomplished this dozens and dozens of times. Good work. Just keep it up. <laughs>